Hi, my name is Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're gonna to talk about some common mistakes I see beginner miniature painters making. What up, Mini Family? Everyone makes mistakes, that's totally normal, but knowing about potential future mistakes you may make in the present can help you to avoid them in the future. It's like the minority report of miniature painting crimes. Somebody's priming outside when it's cold! Stop them! So let's kick it off with number one. Stop using the smallest brushes you can possibly find. I totally understand the thought process. It makes sense. I'm painting small dudes, so I should use small brushes. Unfortunately, this does more harm than good. A smaller brush means you have less capacity for paint, which means you're making more frequent trips back to the palette, and also your paint is drying faster on your paintbrush. You don't need a tiny brush. What you need is a fat brush with a sharp tip. What did you call me? A sharp tipped fat brush will not only get you the same accuracy as your small brush, it'll also give you that longevity so you don't need to make so many trips back and forth to the palette. Number two, beware of a dirty cup. If your paint cup has dried paint gouge in the bottom and you rinse your paintbrush in it, you have the potential of loosening that gouge, which that means it gets into the water and then it gets into the paintbrush and then it gets into the paint and then it gets into the model and then it gets into the air and then we all die. Thin stuff like this isn't really a problem. It's a real problem when you let your cup fully dry out. The gouge on the bottom of the cup is thick and built up. So just don't let your cup dry out. And if you do, clean it. Number three. When applying any layer of paint, whether it's a base coat or a glaze, or you're using a paintbrush or an airbrush, you need to stop touching it after a certain period of time or you're going to get unwanted texture on your miniature. Now it's hard to say the exact amount of working time each paint brand has because it differs, but it all kind of revolves around how fast paint dries. So let's talk about what affects paint drying time. A more thickly applied coat of paint will dry more slowly than a thinner application of paint. A paint thin with more water dries more quickly than a less diluted paint. Dry and hot climates also make paint dry more quickly. As a rule of thumb, let's say you shouldn't work with the paint any longer than 15 seconds. And then when that time is up, move on to a different part of the model until that first part has fully dried. To expedite the drying process, keep a used hair dryer next to your desk to speed it up. Number four, use more saturated colors. I give a lot of feedback on my patron discord and one of the most common lines of feedback I give is your scheme is just blah. I don't know where to look. There's nothing to focus on. Now some of you Space Marine fanboys out there might say, I have to use a very specific blue. Okay, well that's fine. Maybe consider instead of painting the blue more vibrantly of an ultramarine, maybe paint his lenses in a more saturated tone so you can draw the viewer's gaze up to the model's face or a less integral color to your scheme. Lifting one or two items saturation on your paint scheme can really do a lot to make your miniature look a lot better. Number five, allow your wet palette to evaporate some water when you're not using it. A lot of people have problems with wet palettes over hydrating their paint overnight when they're not painting. When you're done painting, consider putting your lid on upside down as to not make a perfect seal or drill some holes in the top of your wet palette. This will allow for the water to evaporate some and not over hydrate your paint, making it more usable on day two. This does however mean you need to add water to your wet palette the next day. Maybe you have the opposite problem because you live in some hellish landscape like Arizona. Maybe you can't keep your wet palette moist. Well, if that's the case, consider painting next to a humidifier that will lift the moisture content in the air and hopefully also the longevity of your wet palette. Number six, get rid of your mold lines. Most miniatures are fabricated with a two-part mold, meaning that on each piece, there's a little seam of plastic or resin around the part where it's squeezed out during the casting process. As a matter of fact, you can actually really easily find all the mold lines on your miniature by just thinking about how this piece was casted. This entire sprue was casted as one single solid piece. So every single bit in this sprue has a mold line that runs around its perimeter parallel to the plane of this sprue. If you keep that in mind, you'll never miss a mold line. 
With an X-Acto knife, some files, and some sanding twigs, you should be able to take care of all the mold lines you come across. But what happens if you missed the mold line and started priming the miniature or started painting on top of that? Well, if it's really egregious, you can just scrape it away with an X-Acto knife. You don't need to strip the miniature and reprime it. Just applying a little bit of paint over that scraped area will work out just fine. Number seven, use a painting handle when you're working on your miniatures. You can make a painting handle out of pretty much anything with either poster tack or double-sided tape. I often use pieces of cork or pieces of wood. This gives your painting hand a large area to rest and allows you to adjust the height of the miniature with respect to your paintbrush to your desire. Number eight, stop using white acrylic paint to apply your zenithal undercoats. White ink is a literal godsend and applies so much more smoothly than acrylic paint. No, most white inks are a semi-opaque ink, which means that you can build up multiple layers of color to get maximum opacity. Not all ink has this property, and on some brands, it'll be identified on the side of the container. Number nine, put some effort into the basing of your miniature. I get it. It's the last part of the miniature for most of you guys, and you want to just get it over with. But it's amazing how little time you can invest in the basing of a miniature and how much it lifts the overall look of that miniature. Add some different colors of foliage, use some dry pigments, add some tiny leaves, etc. Compared to how long you spend painting your miniature, your base deserves at least this much. Also, paint your damn base rims. I swear to God, if I see one unpainted base rim on Instagram, I'm going to lose my shit! Number 10, stop caring about the specific paint color you're using. I see beginners asking all the time about specific colors that other painters use or paint plans. And you know what? I get it. You paint as a means to an end. And that end is a game. You're not painting miniatures to artistically express yourself. That makes total sense. But you know, when you don't paint at all due to decision paralysis or just because you're afraid you're going to mess up, well then what's the point? I'm sure 95% of you would be more happy with at least some kind of color on your miniatures than no color at all. So stop stressing out about that specific shade of European mud brown and just grab whatever brown you got. Well, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you like this style of video and this format, you can find another video identical to this one with, with different advice linked in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Do you think I missed any particular beginner mistakes? If so, leave them in the comment section below so that we can all learn together. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, there are a bunch of links in the description that enable you to do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and discuss things like your miniature painting projects or your favorite flavor of Skittle, I don't know. Subscribe or die! <laughs> but most importantly, don't forget to pay my medal! Peace.